Hey guys, Harry here. Back again with Beers After Eight with H. Anyway, <laughs> that tile's a bit cringy still. But uh, before I start the video, I'd like to thank everyone. Uh, we've hit uh, 265 subscribers, so to the 250 mark over that. Uh, you know, thanks so much for the support. Uh, it surprises me every day with the comments I get, you know, all the nice comments and and the supportive comments from anyone uh, who's a fan of who's a fan of bricklaying or, or who's a bricklayer themselves really appreciate the support and uh, anyone who's watching right now about 80 percent of my viewers aren't subscribed so if you uh enjoying the content so far i've only been posting for uh, less than a month so if you enjoy i'm gonna work on getting better and better with the editing and uh, and getting, you know, hopefully getting a little laptop or something for doing a bit more, uh, bit more dedicated edits and, uh, you know, hopefully get an action cam for some more sort of on the job content instead of just voiceovers. Um, thanks so much and, uh, and I uh, hope you're enjoying. But anyway, back with another, uh, bit I vlog today. Uh, we're building the garden wall again. Uh, this is a little guy as you can see the scaffolds behind me um, it's blocking off some of the straight stretches so there's a nice straight bit behind under that scaffold and there's a scaffold on the other side um, off camera that's covering a nice little straight bit as well so I've kind of got the worst bit of the boundary wall I've got this little this little 12 brick long section and you know, with two pillars in I decided to put an expansion at that side the far side of the wall and then uh, tomorrow I'm going to be going on to a squint part of the wall. I'm going to finish this off uh, to full height and then go on to a little bit of a squint part. But uh, I'll hopefully get some footage tomorrow as well. But uh, today we're just running in uh, two 12 course corners. And uh, we I built these, built these with a pillar integrated, obviously, tied in. I used a, a profile at the far side of each pillar. As you can see, I've got just an aluminium up there. Um, I've got it as a ranging profile and a plumbing profile, so it's all, you know, it's taking away two plumb points there. And the gauge tape, I don't have a U, I don't ever really go to gauge on a, on a wall. Uh, I try to, you know, maintain gauge at one side of the wall and then I just level across periodically. And a lot of the time you can creep up for your gauge a little bit, especially if you're not, um, especially if the house next to you isn't brickwork. The house next to this is a part render. It's got render up most of it, so it doesn't really matter keeping gauge to the that to the house because it's rendered. So you'll know you'll never tell. Uh, and it depends on the brick sizes as well, because obviously if the bricks are quite big, which a lot of these bricks tend to come, uh, these heritage style bricks. Uh, you know you're gonna creep up on gauge. And I like to just maintain a nice looking 10 mil joint uh, throughout the whole bound garden wall, boundary wall, whatever you want to call it. Um, instead of trying to grind down to exact brick gauge, I just try to maintain a nice 10 mil joint at each side and just maintain a level wall. So if that means the gauge of the wall is 20, 30 mil high and the whole wall's 30 mil high, that doesn't matter to me. As long as they've got nice sized joints throughout the whole wall, that's all I'm looking for because... A boundary wall isn't it doesn't hold lintels. It doesn't have a have a roof on. It's just meant to look nice. So if you can maintain you know equal perp joints, uniform bed joints, uniform perps, you know you're halfway there. That's what a lot of people forget when building boundary walls is that it's a feature in a way. It's the first thing you see when you go when you walk up to the house. It's you know it's around the around the side of the house. You know you, you a boundary wall is meant to be looked at. And if it don't look right, you know, it's going to fucking put a bad taste in the mouth of the customer when they come to buy the house. So uh, the main main thing I've emphasised all these years doing these boundary walls is to maintain neatness on them. You know what I mean? You can throw them up. Don't get me wrong. You can chuck them up quick, but make a good job of the jointing. Make sure the level, make sure the plumb. And, uh, and you know, the good earners, these are the best earners uh, I've found when it, even even when it comes to houses. On houses, there's too many things that slow you down, like, you know, windows, lintels, damp trays, uh, you know, tie wires in, block work, you know, boundary walls, straight, straight cream 
all the way through. Just just brick on brick on brick, you know what I mean? Just keep laying and laying and it's just solid and there's nothing to slow you down, which I which I like. You know, I'm a big fan. Um supervisor for the firm I work for, keeps me building walls and garages, you know, I make neat job I make a neat job of them and luckily for luckily for me, other gangs have had a go building walls and made our balls up. Uh, made them look a bit rough. Other gangs have had a go at what building garages. Same again. Made them made them look a bit rough. So that's why I try to ca- keep my standard pretty high, and uh, you know keep getting given these walls and garages, which is, you know, stress free earners, stress free earners, and uh, especially now I've incorporated the pick and dip. Uh, they go up astronomically faster. You know, I've definitely from the from about. Three years ago, uh, when I first started building these, three or four, probably four or five years ago, when I first started properly building these walls on a regular basis, um, I probably doubled in speed building them to then. And then since learning pick and dip, you know, I'm laying an average of an extra 200 bricks a day on average than what I was before using pick and dip. I've seen uh, numerous comments off people on the older videos when I was a bit newer to using pick and dip in uh, slating pick and dip and etc etc and slating that my joints aren't filled etc um all I've got to say to people to those people is you know it's up to you it's up to you no one's uh, forcing you to use pick and dip but I'm telling you it's faster you'll earn more money and uh, it makes just a good just as good a job so you can say I've got empty perps all day long but uh, when I finish building them, they're full. On a cavity, back of my joints are full. I don't drop, I don't drop tons and tons of mortar down the cavity. Um, if you're really inclined, you can get a, you know, get a bit of cut down a little bit of drain pipe. You know, leave a colouring all out, leave drain pipe in. Really good method for maintaining, you know, a nice clean cavity. But at the end of the day, that's what you leave colouring holes at the bottom of your. Uh, and you raid on trays and stuff like that, or if you're over, you're leaving a coring all over your, uh, over your big trays for your, for your, uh, for your soldiers and stuff like that. You know, leave a block out. That's what a lot of guys have seen been doing, leaving blocks out. But at the end of the day, fucking, I'm a bit old school. I fucking try and make a neat job of the face side. No one's ever gonna see inside the cavity, except the HPC man, and if. You're that bothered about how your cavities look. Take a look at your face work and then get a bit more bothered about that. I'm a bit old school in that sense. Uh, you know, fair enough. Don't have more on your tie wires, but if you're spending a full day cleaning your cavity out for an HPC inspection, you're wasting your fucking time. Do you know what I mean? You know, if, if they're that fussed about there being a bit of dust in your, in your damp trays, I'd go work for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I'm, in this video, I've I've made a point of not cutting out, <laughs> not cutting out the uh, the in between parts where I'm moving the line up. I'm using a technique that I used for years. Um, put my brick about two or three core on this. Obviously, instance I was using, I was just putting my brick two course higher than the uh, on the second brick higher than what I needed, and then I trap it down with the brick as a little tingle. I use this method anyway when just lining, putting the line up, line up on a corner block. But this is, you know, a really easy thing to do. Uh, is you know trap you trap your line with a brick. I use a three quarter actually, so you know I snap the head off of a brick. So sometimes a brick's a bit too wide, can sometimes rock about. But a three quarter works pretty well, and uh, you know I tingle down, so and I can just move my my brick up, tighten the line. And I'm going to keep taking the pin in and out at, at both sides. I can just take it out one. Really handy method. I'm using the backwards pick and dip technique here. As you can see, walling backwards, which I've never been a fan of. I've, uh, I left a comment on uh, someone who recommended me doing it this way. And watching it right now, it is, you know, more efficient. The movement is more fluid. I just find myself drifting on my perp joints a little bit more using this technique, but I'm not going to lie, it it feels a lot smoother. You know, I'm not going to lie at all. I'm definitely probably faster walling backwards, if anything. 
Um, but it's just going to take me a little bit of time to get used to. I'm going to keep using the backwards pick and dip technique. Just got to get used to walling backwards again. Never really did it seriously, walling backwards. I, I used to wall backwards a little bit when I used to work completely solo before my dad worked with me. I had a, I had a stint where I did six months solo completely. And really took a knock to my speed, actually, uh, being solo all the time. But... Uh, Having me done three, four days, up three and a half. Well, he likes to do three days, but he'll do three and a half. And sometimes a fourth, depending on how he's feeling. But having me done nice, a nice three and a half days a week really is, uh, really makes my speed. Uh, fucking, it really increases the speed, especially on solo days as well. Uh, I found when I went solo for six or eight months, my speed absolutely tanked because I was always loading out. It seemed I was always loading out. And I wasn't very efficient with my time, you know what I mean? I didn't learn to become efficient until I had my dad with me, so... And it's coming on three years, he's working with me now, but... So, yeah, as you can see there, uh, I was just taking a look at what I'd done using the backwards technique on pick and dip. And uh, I've got to say, it's good. Really, really good. Um, uh, you know, there's going to be guys who will... I've, I've seen some comments, people slating the pick and dip, saying it looks rough. Um motor flying everywhere etc etc all i'm gonna say is you're not wasting time you know what i mean i'm not gonna say that you're gonna you're gonna drop a little bit more mortar yeah but you have to adapt and you know put in other systems to catch that mortar and you know you have got to change the way you build you know what i mean at the end of the day you're gonna drop more mortar you say on the back of a boundary wall you're gonna drop more mortar out you're gonna drop more mortar on a garage floor and you're going to drop more mortar in the cavity if you're not angling your spread correctly on a pick and dip, if you're putting too much gobble on, if you're not, you know, putting necessary, you know, cavity cavity main maintenance measures in when you're, uh, when you're walling, as you would traditional. It's the same rules apply as traditional to pick and dip, is that when you first started laying traditional, everyone knows you used to fucking fill the cavity, you used to fucking knock, you know, drop trial floor gobbo down. That's a common thing you do as an apprentice. You know, you, you lose control of your mortar. And it's the same thing with using pick and dip. No matter how experienced you are, when you first start using pick and dip, you're not going to fill your joints as effectively. You're not going to, um, you know, you're not going to use your mortar as effectively. You're going to waste a bit more, or push a bit more mortar out of the joints than is needed. But it takes time getting that rhythm getting that, you know, nice, smooth motion to where, you know, you're not way, you're not pushing too much more out of the joints and you're not filling the cavity up and you are filling the back of your perp joint. And with with 